Duck for tomorrow as well, because they're both teammates with Senior Platt in Subaki's three versus three tournament. So oh. getting to know each other just a little bit better right now, having this best of three series, they'll cooperate very well during the Club Wars segment of, uh, of Top Cut tomorrow. Yeah, very true. Definitely if they're using the same team, but out the gate, Buff Duck banning that two rock. And you know, he does have some wind temptems that, you know, the feather galleons could end up adding up to, as well as that stone ball from the two rock. Look to be fairly good against the mix, the Volcrane. So yeah, I could kind of see the two rock going down, especially with the Volfi getting banned as well. So no direct answers having to ban it. But Darwin starting off pretty straightforward, picking up the Kinu to get things started. Yeah, the Kinu, it's kind of a passive lead, I feel, for, for a team that's got that Cerny Fire Koish, even the uh, the Moo Flank and, and Valash. There's a lot of aggressive openings that Tawin could go for, but he's kind of playing it safe with his Kinu choice. A buff duck, of course. I mean, the mix that he's been known for lately and the Golder that he's been known for forever. This is this is pretty much exactly what I'd expect out of buff duck. The, the Valash is a good counter. I, I think that that's going to... Uh, after a madness buff, of course, just decimate mix. Yeah, huge. And getting that early Kinu buff on the lash feels very good. So much so, Rezi, are we thinking a madness buff in this opening turn or is something like a crystal spike, toxic ink, a little bit too much for the Valash opening turn? I think that the Kinu buff means that Valash won't go down on turn one. And, and then scaring away Mix for turn two means that, you know, potentially Kinu could go for Revitalize. Uh, it, it's, it wouldn't be a bad decision. It would just be a little bit more on the the aggressive, uh, calling a bluff kind of kind of play. Uh, banning the Gyal is second. That is another really good man for Buff Duck. The, the melee is going to do quite a lot of damage onto Volcrane and Ruler, as well as, you know, just a lot of crystal damage on the Orangey. Yeah, so not too bad. Tywin picking up the next ban. Yeah, Gyalas, fantastic ban. So what does he want to ban? I mean, Volerin always is pesky temp, so that one is indeed catching the ban. So hey, picks and bans are done. Well, the bans are rather done. It's time for the picks. So Tywin keeping things straightforward. We've been talking out, talking about it most of the turn, not most of the tournament, but time and time again. The fire water coish, one of the most oppressive temp temps in the current meta and getting recruited on Tawin's team here. I, I feel like there's a bit of a benefit on Tawin's side that uh, this Barnshee is is really good against pretty much all the Buff Duck side, except for this mix. But uh, if, if this Falash does go for the Madness buff and just hard pressures out mix for a majority of the game, then, then Barnshee might, you know, since it has gone unbanned, might be able to wreak havoc on the likes of Gulder and Mashuk. Yeah, very true. It's one of the best answers uh, that Tywin currently has to answer those Temtems. But to be fair, a Madness buff for Lash tends to do so much. But we'll see. I mean, it might be cutting it very, very close. Because Crystal Spike does outspeed before the special defense goes online from the Madness buff. But as you said, Kinu buff is right there. So I think not a rather free one, but a decent, a decent Madness buff. <laughs> but we will see what these tamers have in store. It is the quarterfinals time. Number one seed Tywin going head to head against our number eight seed, Mr. Buff Duck. Who's getting that early tempo advantage with the early victory in our best of three series? Let's find out in this game number one. Yeah, I mean, so early on, Talwin does have this Koish in the back that could always threaten out Mix to quite a lot of damage, but it definitely doesn't want to fight Gulder. And and since this turn one is a little bit up in the air, it's up to Buff Duck what he wants to do. If, if you double into the Lash, you probably don't get the KO thanks to this Kinu buff, but it will do quite a lot and potentially set it up for a KO on turn two or three. Uh, you know, uh, opposing that, you could target this Kinu down and do quite a lot of damage. So that in that vein of thinking, there, there's no safe place to bring Koish in. Uh, and really, you don't want move flank either at this point in time. So I think Talon, his best bet might just be to go for the Madness buff. Yeah, I definitely agree with that one. As you said, maybe Buff Duck, it doesn't feel good. Anytime you see a Valash without a Madness buff, you tend to always gun it down before it gets out of hand. 
But yeah, maybe since he can't get the kill, maybe electing to go into that Kinu spot, doubling up just in case something like the Fire Koish comes out to eat this Toxic Ink. So let's see, Tywin does indeed bring out the move flank. So not too bad. But oh. Oh. He just crystal spiked himself into Puppet Master. So oh. <laughs> the dust had to hit Goulder. That was incredible. That yeah. was incredible from Buff Duck. He just barely survives. That point six is one HP. <laughs> wow, I've never ever seen that in the history. We are on tournament 39, 39 weeks doing this, and I've never ever seen anyone crystal spike their own mix. It's so crazy. So crazy that it just might work. Beautiful stuff, but Tywin not going with the Madness buff as we just saw. It does elect to go for a Crystal Dust. I think he was just setting up for the 1-2 punch. So Crystal Dust into Crystal Spike. That's what Tywin had in mind. And that, that does put him in a pretty difficult situation as Tywin doesn't have any spread moves. So this mix... This mix is perfectly happy to just hang out. He's, he's got Sweatband. Goulder is <laughs> not going down anytime soon. It was a good madness buff taking advantage of the cage turn. But that means that now Mooflank is trapped in with a Psy Surge from Mix. That that was unbelievable from Buff Duck. I know that, that Crystal Spike in your own mix, that was something we were talking about back in January maybe, but I, we had heard about it from other people and, and we'd never really seen it done successfully in any mm -hmm. in any tournaments, any top cuts, any streams. So that was incredible. Yeah, beautiful stuff so far. So doing some good damage on the Golder, but as you said, no AOE. So the side surge looking to clean up the move flank, catching it, looking at, at maybe swapping into Kino the previous turn. So had to stay in there from the cage. And hey, that does give the Valash another scavenger proc, or maybe the first scavenger proc of the day. So Valash is still kicking. He's at plus three special defense, plus one defense, plus two special attack. And to add on top of that, Kinu coming in one more time. Is the whole left side kind of scared away from this Valash? Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Oh, the Volcrane. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Valash, it, Valash won't be able to do it all on its own, especially without the Sweatband. It's already getting pretty low on stamina. And, and it's really only Crystal Spiked twice, right? It hit Goulder twice and it uh, Crystal Dusted Mix. Or no, I'm sorry, it Crystal Dusted Goulder too, because Mix attacked itself first. Exactly right. So, yeah, funny enough, the C Spike went first. Because if, if the Seed Dust would have gone first on Mix, the Mix would have killed itself. So yeah, 3 Pryo Mix going faster than the 4 Pryo on the Valash. That's some good information for these Tamers to work with. But yeah, I'm not too sure. Valash looking at a possible overexertion if he does indeed go for a C Spike. Does that kill the Golder? It will be close. I didn't get to catch how much damage it did the first C Spike. But okay, everything's staying put. C-Spike on the Kinu, bringing it very low. Yeah, Kinu down to 30%. Crystal Dust isn't quite enough on Ghoul on its own, but combined with the Beta Burst, just maybe. No, 3% remaining Toxic Ink brings Kinu down, so there's no Sacrifice shenanigans. Although, a second Scavenger buff is not a bad thing. If you're going to lose your Thames, you may as well get some kind of benefit. Yeah, and Tywin looking like such a solid opener in hindsight, but Buff Duck going with the craziest play we've seen in some time. Ending off paying dividends for sure. Look at this. Two Temtems down on the side of Tywin. It did come at a good cost. I mean, Ty uh, Buff Duck pretty much two Temtems down himself, but Mix in Puppet Master range. And you know what? Tywin's team, I don't think he has any AoE, so the Sweatband Mix might be the true carry buff Doug needs in this game one because yeah i can't think of anything barnchy koish or valash has as an aoe technique he has to get a kill and then hope the second attack kills the mix or i mean anything's gonna kill the mix from this position but yeah he just has to hope to get one kill you know if golder stays in that would definitely go down and then the koish could clean up the mix but buff Doug most likely swapping into either the mashuk or volcrane but I think with that water cannon pressuring it out, maybe not so much the Volcrane here. You know, I'm starting to wonder, maybe that first ban on Turok from Buff Duck was premeditated for that turn one. 
Wow. Maybe he had this planned from the beginning. He wanted to get rid of the Rockfall and, and leave Talwin without anything. I mean, the, the swap does come in, so Mashuk is taking this water cannon. It, definitely, the water cannon was uh, expecting a Volcrane, so it was good of Buff Duck not to, not to make the most obvious play. He protects his Volcrane's HP a little longer because that, that times four... Or not times four, but you know what I mean. The, the, mm -hmm. It's uh, very, very weak to the water cannon, even without a lot of special attack investment on Quish. Yeah, absolutely. And I, hey, I love what you're saying there. So making sure that Tywin for sure had no AoE for this mix. That opening play completely bonkers. But Buff Duck now having the option to bring something in. He could bring the mix one more time, which it looks like he is indeed. So Mashuk kind of tanky. But not the most tanky. I mean, a good saving grace for Buff Duck is that Valash is pretty much out of stamina. Has to maybe rest this turn. Or swap over to the Barnsley spot. I think Buff Duck is putting Tywin in a tough predicament here. Because if you swap to Barnsley, you yes, you eat an uppercut. But does Mix have a crazy C spike waiting for the Barnsley on the entry? These are questions Tywin is thinking about here. Yeah, I have to imagine that's what Buff Duck wants to do, bringing Mix back out. I mean, since since he doesn't have to worry about taking any of that Quetzalenyo from Koish, and he knows that Mashuk isn't going to go down this turn with Valash so low and, and so low on stamina, and Koish unable to do any effective damage, this has to be a Crystal Spikes into that spot. It's not going to do very much onto Valash with that plus four special defense buff. But just in case, you know, you, you have to cover all bases and mm -hmm. Barnshee in the Valash would be a little bit too powerful for Talon. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So Talon thinking about what he can do, maybe rest might have to just be the best play. If he goes for a C-spike, that overexertion is going to be huge. Could be worth it just to do some big damage on the Mashuk, but I'm thinking the rest may be perhaps the most ideal. But to be fair, I don't think there is a too much of an ideal play right now for Tywin. But hey, as you said, it is a plus four special defense, plus two defense Valash. So if there's any Temtem that could really do some hurting on Buff Duck's team, it is this Valash. So hey, we'll see. It looks like nothing's moving here. Yeah, the cage from Bashuk does mean Hypnosis will, will keep it from uppercutting this turn or next turn. Psy Surge from this uh, mix onto Koish not playing bets. I mean, there's, there's no reason to Crystal Spikes of Alash if he's trapped in place. And, and doing just below 50% onto Koish is very, very nice. Although he can't do it two times in a row. So Koish is free to do what it wants this turn. But I mean, what can it really do if you attack Mashuk? You're just going to wake it up and you can't attack Mix. Yeah, this mix, that turn one play, changing all the tide of this battle, making Tywin have to, you know, make some really, really tough choices here. So yeah, I mean, do you just wake up the Mashuk? So it will be an EM putting it in that side surge range for the next turn. It won't be Kate. And <laughs> hey! <laughs> All right, all right. There we go. You know, all those scavenger procs do start to add up. So Valash able to get off another madness buff. I mean, if there's one Temtem that could definitely do it, it will be a plus four special attack Valash. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, <you> know, <laughs> uh, this is what we saw however many weeks ago. Gaijin Boo with a couple of double madness buff Valashes, and, and he was able to win some games pretty pretty decisively with that plus four. Yeah. So it, it, it may not work out exactly the same with this Valash staring down Mashuk and Volcrane. Uh, they, they they eat it a little bit better than some other Thames may, but, but it definitely puts enough pressure down uh, that as soon as Valash has its stamina back in play, you know, this Koish is probably going to be going down, which means Barnshi will be able to attack Mashuk, you know, or Volcrane, if that's the swap. That that could actually be very difficult. Buff Duck with that Volcrane still healthy mm -hmm. in the back, that that is pretty scary because because Koish is required for that, but uh but Cage is back from Mashuk, so there's there's not even there's nothing for Talon to do here. I think Buff Duck just has too much control. Yeah, the Volker in the back line is one Temtem that even a plus four special attack Valash will have a hard time dealing with, but no cage, so going for the Crystal Spike, and wow, so well calculated from Buff Duck. 
just in case the born chain did swap in that was the crystal spike if the if the core stayed in it was still enough to kill so well played and now final two temp dance for tywin can this crazy beefed up raid boss Valash get the job done or did buff deck almost seal the deal on that opening play with this sweatband puppet master mix I'm curious if that Arushio was a misclick, if that was uh, trying to be P-Jab or Uppercut instead, because it definitely was not the best option for Mishuk to do. It, it didn't do very much damage, and there was no synergy for Toxic Ticks. Yeah. So that was a little bit weird. That might have, uh, if, if that was a misclick, that might have given Talwin a bit more of an opening, but I, I still just think that this low stamina of a lash is, is too much. The, the double screen is nice for the damage, but when you've got plus two, plus five on your defenses, I think Sweatband would be a little bit more valuable. Yeah, absolutely. And he, uh, he's he been hurting for stamina, having to go for a seed dust time and time again. I know he wants to go for the big hitting crystal spike, but has to pretty much rest here or have to sacrifice a lot of HP to do so. And yeah, you're absolutely right. The Euro show was a bit funky there. Maybe not running uppercut, <laughs> but at least he would have a P jab, right? A P jab, a bit more value than Euro show in this predicament. All right, but Mashuk does retreat and it's going to be a Barnchi. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think a C does, if it does go for it, would be enough for a Barnchi. Yeah, I mean, Crystal Spikes, it is going first. It doesn't quite take down Barnchi and the wind burst. So Valash takes a rest. That is a really good but risky read on Buff Duck's side. And and probably just the final nail in the coffin for Talwin as as now Barnshi's going to go down without the ability to attack Mushuk and, and no way to do any damage to Volcrane at this point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean C does. We actually saw Mix outspeed the C. Oh no, okay, with the wind synergy making it even higher prior, so Barnshi a hundred percent goes down. Scavenger goes up, but as you said, another crystal spike. So much pressure. This is the power of a sweat ban hidden behind a puppet master. All these scavenger procs, so much so that the Valash can't even heal any further. And okay, Buff the playing is safe here, saying, you know what? I'ma just try to do as much damage as I can. Volcrane will be my win con at the very end. So hey, mad respect to Buff the playing this game very, very five head. Yeah, the energy manipulation means that if Valash were to go for an attack, that would just be the end of it all. Mushuk showing us he does run uppercut, so it's a good note to write down for future matches. Uh, don't take that for granted. Another energy manipulation, though, means Crystal Spikes is still not on the table for Valash, and yet yeah, uppercut, he's still just resting two in a row. I mean, now he can Crystal Spikes, but... But at what cost? He's, he's going to use all of his stamina. He's going to kill Mishuk, but then he's going to fight Volcrane. Yeah, very true. And this is Buff Duck's idea. Just chip down this Valage. Volcrane will do the rest. So C does just to not overexert. But man, C does is, is, is packing a punch, though, I will say. But the final uppercut didn't even use the Volcrane in this game. Buff Duck coming out to play, taking down Tywin. AoE, because the only other Tem. It was Gialis, I believe, on Talwin's side that was the second ban. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I don't recall what the Tem that he left behind was. Let's see. When oh, it was a Cerny. The so there's there's mm -hmm. still no... Yeah, there's no AoE. With, with Turok gone, <laughs> Nyx does take that first ban. That's that's a lot of respect. <laughs> yeah, did so much work for Buff Duck. So yeah, does indeed catch the ban. So no longer sweating, but that means the ban he banned before, which was the Volfi and the Volarin, one of those Tems do get to be uh, picked up for Buff Duck. So we'll see if one of those Temp Tems do make such an impact as this mix did in the previous game. I don't think as much as the mix, but Volfi feels kind of strong into Tywin's team too. So we will see. Yeah, I mean, banning the Kinu too, that's really good for Buff Duck because Kinu really supported Valash last time in, in a way that I don't think Valash is going to see the success that, that it had last game. You know, it wasn't able to carry everything, but it was able to take down some good Thames and, and do a lot of damage. Uh, but without the Kinu buffs, that's that's not really going to happen. Yeah, you know, what an impressive performance. That is the first time I believe we see like a crazy raid boss Valash really go down that way. 
Because I mean, one mana's buff usually enough to carry a game. Add another mana's buff on top of that. That's usually definitely enough to carry a game. So well done. I uh, buffed the game, the job done. So Wolfie, it was the first ban for Tywin. Does guarantee get it picked up for that turn one. Uh, who is he pairing it up for? Yeah, Volarin doesn't feel too bad. The Mashuk doesn't feel all that bad either. Maybe a bit susceptible to the Barnchi slash two. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I guess the Barnchi. Hmm. Yeah, I think the, the blue side definitely benefiting Talon a little bit more. Um, well, I think it was blue last time too, wasn't he? <laughs> Not going with Kinu first is benefiting Talon a little bit more here with the Fire Koi. She does leave himself open to... Uh, both the Mooflink and the Cernif as kind of the popular choices. Uh, but of course, you know, depending on what buff Tuck had brought, if, if we did see Mashuk instead of that Volar End, then I, I think Barnshee would have been a great pick. The Cernif, I guess I do like this. It, it does uh, guarantee a kill on Volfi if he wants to stay in. But there are quite a few swaps that could, that could easily come in here. I mean, the Volcrane or uh, Mashuk. Are both pretty happy eating this turn one from Talon. Yeah, I almost like the move flank play a little bit better only because Buff Duck has a lot of toxic and we know that WCL doesn't do too much into the Mashuk or Golder, but it does do a fair amount to the uh, Roger, the Barnchi, the Wolfie, so I think fair enough. <laughs> We've definitely seen Cernif outlast some of these toxic Thames, but running next to the Fire Koish. More often than not, these are uh, speedy settling Cernifs. Oh, oh, is it indeed a settling Cernif? We'll have to take a look in the opening turn. Or not opening, I believe the next turn. But the move flank didn't pick it up for the opener, but does indeed recruit it on his squad. So the bans for buff duck, it was the Mushuk. So one of those uh, answers to eat up some Cernif attacks. So only leaving that Golder in the back line. And the Turok one more time catching the ban. That's a lot of respect on the Turok there. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Turok would be a fantastic counter towards uh, both Volcrane and Rulder, as well as Feather Gatling for uh, the likes of Volarand, Barnshee, and Gulder. Mm -hmm. So so Turok does have to take that ban there for Buff Duck. I, I appreciate the Ginu taking the first ban, uh, especially after losing Mix. The, the rock fall wasn't quite as terrifying as it was in game one but but it, it did have to go uh Barnshee and gialis finishing up talwin's team gialis was actually a pretty recent addition so th there's still a bit of a learning curve on this gialis side it used to be a yowler i believe okay uh, so so it's definitely a bit of a different play it, it gives him more speed uh it, it does give him potentially a better way to handle uh volcrane with the hook kicks being a little bit faster um, but I guess at the same time, Yowler's Oshidashi, and, and it would survive better. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, no, I think you're absolutely right. I like, I like, I like the speed on Gialis 100%. I mean, look at Tywin's team. I mean, we have C sh uh, Sharp Stab, Crystal Bite for the Barnji, uh, Hook Kick for the Volcrane and the Volfi. So yeah, Gialis feels very strong on Tywin's team. But this is game number two of the quarterfinals. Buff Duck, game point right here, right now. One more win. He finds himself in that semi-final seat. Tawin has to do a bit of a comeback and has a really strong opener to do so. Just like Rosie said, a WCL with the water synergy on top of a Quetzalenyo will or most likely will be enough to take out the Volfi. So what can Buff Duck do? Maybe the gold are swap nice and early just to put a lot of pressure back on the Koish. I can maybe see that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that's probably what we'll we'll have come through because Volcrane, there's always the risk that Talwin makes a good read and, and uses that water cannon. Uh, but Gulder just doesn't mind whatsoever. He takes the Quetzalenyo and and he laughs with 85% HP remaining. Yeah, so Buff Duck taking his time. I'm getting a little distracted over here. But Buff Duck taking his time, trying to see what is the best idea. Thinking about that play though, Tywin knowing that the Golder can't come in, maybe just elects to go into the bird instead. But no, okay, going a little. Oh, okay, thinking of the of the read to make the read. Golder in for the bird. Okay. 
move flank though with, with this move flank it does make me think the target is Volfi, but no he does he targets down the volar and instead he hits the golder for hardly anything at all and he gets himself trapped in place from that plague with those handcuffs so now golder is forced to take a toxic ink it is a nice plus one speed on unnoticed move flank though yeah, absolutely. And hey, that is where the mind games come into play. Tywin had a kill on the Volfi, but out of respect to your competition, you never think someone at high, as high level as Buff Duck is just going to leave a Volfi on the board to just get killed, right? So Tywin, you know, thinking ahead, trying to read the read there, while Buff Duck being bold, being stern, and keeping the Volfi in, getting a clean plague. And now this Koish is trapped in, staring down a big boy Golder. One Toxic Ink plus another Plague will be enough to take it down. Question is, a Quetzalenio plus a Goring, is that enough to take down the Golder? But for the Toxic Ink, it might be a little close here. Uh, I th just maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the first one it did do, what is this, 32? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. That that is asking quite a bit. Um, yeah. From from probably a base jump, since well, I don't know. You could still be the Goring just to make sure you go before. I mean, Volfi, but th this could also just be targeting down Volfi spot. I I think that move flank definitely gives Talwin a better footing, because uh, he'll be able to do damage now to everybody if he doubles in. Yeah, I and mean, it looks like Tywin agrees with you. Most likely gunning down this Volfi. Is it enough to close it out? No, it's chilling at that 15%. But Buff Duck gonna be splitting or uh, splitting the plagues here. So not gunning down the Quish, hoping that the Golder will be good enough. Is it good enough? 65. Okay, with those two toxic ticks, it will be good enough. So maybe time to work on this move flank. But we keep seeing Quish is moving before the Volfi plague. So one more Quetzalenyo. Most likely going into either of these Temtems. Volfi, does he want to save it for down the road? Or does he I feel just... like this is this is a pretty good double swap for Buff Duck. If he just wants to bring uh, both Barnshee and Volcrane in, Volcrane on Volfi's spot and then and then Barnshee for Golder, I think that that would protect against, you know, where the damage is more likely to go. And that gives you a uh, hard counter for move flank with that mental where it's still trapped in place. And, and Koish is just going to fall down to the Toxic Tick. So unless he reads it and uses Water Cannon now, uh, that, that gets rid of all of the Water Threat. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that play. Well, I mean, that would be really, really fine for the Tywin. Wants to throw a Water Cannon onto either of these slots. Most likely thinking about a Quetzalenyo. But we will see, of course, Koish goes down. So if it's a Volcrane and a Barnchi here, uh, Tywin does get a potential to bring an attempt to, to, you know, try to do some damage on this, but everything stays put. So water cannon just in case. Fortunately, it is enough to close out the Volfi. Yeah, so I guess Buff Duck predicting Talwin's prediction uh, does confirm the kill on Koish. There is no Valash to take the scavenger buffs this time, so their deaths will be in vain. There's there's no value gained there. Uh, it, at least they do trade, though, as, as Volfi for Koish. They, they both kind of counter one another, so now it, it simplifies the matter for both sides. Yeah, not too bad. One for one trade, nice and easy here in turn three. So what do these tamers want to bring out? Tawin, maybe a good Barnchi time. It doesn't feel too bad. It doesn't really get hurt by a lot of buff that tempt him. So I could see a Barnchi for Tawin. But it actually, I believe we saw it was a neutrality. I can't recall. If it's neutrality, even better. If it's an air spec, this Golder might have to do a little toxic damage to him. Oh, and instead it will be Giannis. Also a good pick. You do have the resistance trait to only eat one toxic uh, toxic tick from the Golder. But it will be the Barnchi on Buff Duck's side. So the only thing as we usually see, Giannis only opener is of course double gash. I've seen a drill impact a very long time ago, but I don't think anyone is running a drill impact, of course. I, I do like the Gialis more than Barnshee, I think. Um, okay. Now, it, it's it's not too much for this turn, but that means that both Crystal Bite and Hook Kick and Sharp Stabs uh, will, will all be available. So that means that next turn, Barnshee is threatened. 
and that also means Volcrane no longer has a safe swap while Gialis with Hook Kick is available. Yeah, very true. So Tywin thinking one turn ahead, of course. I was just thinking for the current turn, but you're absolutely right. Getting that Crystal Bite Sharp Stab Hook Kick online for the turn five will be quite impactful into any of these Temtems. So we will see. Tywin thinking ahead, but Goring trying to gun down this Golder as well as the Double Gas. So looking at potentially one more hit to take down the Golder. But that's one hit not going into the Barnchi. So wait a minute. Okay, maybe this is the time for Barnchi, huh? Maybe like a, a Hypoxia or a Windburst for the Golder. And then something like a Crystal Bite or Sharp Stab on the Barnchi. However, Volcrane in the back line. Volcrane's such a great Temtem. To really mitigate these crystal temptems. So Rus yeah, I'm I'm pretty concerned about this Zerniv now. It's lost its synergy master friend, and it really doesn't want to fight anybody except for Barnshi. And and even then, it's it doesn't have the best special defense, so it's not a fight that it loves. Yeah, we'll see. So I'm curious here. Does Tywin want to risk the hook kick into Barnshi? Or does he want to keep it straightforward? Something like a sea spike or not sea spike crystal bite into the Barnchi because this is a bit of a read. Buff Duck has been playing quite aggressive in the sense of, you know, doing the risky play. Like right now, yes, Barnchi dies to a sea bite, maybe dies to a sharp stab. So does Buff Duck just want to take the risk, keep the Barnchi in, maybe eat the hook kick or... Does Tywin have enough of playing around the read and just keeps it straightforward for this one turn? Uh, these are tough questions. So far this series, Buff Duck has really taken advantage of Tywin expecting, uh, I, I guess, kind of the best possible play to happen. So I, I think that Tywin does have to just go for it. And good, the, the Crystal Bite is a good play. He, he does take down the Barnshee. He takes a Tornado, so he's not feeling all that good anymore. Uh, but not taking any toxic ticks and, and getting rid of this Goulder is very nice as well. It does give Talwin the Tem advantage, but definitely still not the typing advantage. I think, you know, Hook Kick is available as well as a Tornado, uh, even even Beta Burst. So <laughs> Volcrane has to go down this turn or else, or else. Uh, that's, that's pretty much where it is. Yeah, 100%. Luckily, the Gialas does indeed have a Hook Kick. Volcrane's so tanky in that defense department, but not tanky in the special defense. So 100 all the way under 50. So is a hook kick enough? 42 more than enough. So Volcrane doesn't even get a chance. Yeah, then the Nox Bomb targeting down Barnshi. So maybe not wanting to take any of those energy manipulations. Uh, and and luckily, probably for, for Talon and for this Barnshi, it doesn't do half. Uh, Barnshi's still 57%, and this Volarand on Buff Duck's side is aerobic. So that means as soon as he uses any wind techniques, he's going to drop that special defense. So Barnshi's got to go before Buff Duck can start to use Feather Galley. Yeah, we'll see. Buff Duck down to his final temp temp. So Tywin seemingly has this one in the bag. It's an aerobic to make matters work. I think Tywin with the final tornado here on the Barnchi looking very, very comfortable. Yeah, more than comfortable. I think that will be a GG 100%. Tywin not out of it just yet. So game three still left in this quarterfinals. One game apiece. Which one of these tamers will be moving forward? It's getting quite tight here. Again for game three, Buff Duck gets the blue side this time, so he does have that going for him. But that also means Talon. Yeah, I mean losing losing Turok means that the mix ban is even easier. And and this is this is kind of what made it work for Talon before the barn. She was able to do so much. The move flank was able to do a lot of damage onto Goulder, more than I thought it would. To be perfectly honest. Yeah, you're Sorry. right. Uh, you're saying the wind burst right there, right? Uh, the uh, I don't know if it was a base jump or a goring from Mooflank. It it did oh. like thirty five or forty percent to the Goulder, which I I was thinking maybe twenty five to thirty. Yeah, very is, true. Is so maybe a little bit less defense on Goulder, because yeah, that extra damage from the Mooflank allowed the easy wind burst. No tornado needed from the Barnchi to close it out. So yeah, very close. So we'll keep an eye on that one. 
But same bans coming out for these guys. So Tywin liked his chances without the mix. So we'll ban it one more time. And Buff Duck just really, really does not like this two rock. So those bans will be going. But okay, Tywin starting very similar as he, as he did game one. Fire. Oh, no, no. It was... Maybe yeah, was... this is the same lead. Okay, it is the same lead. Okay. No, I thought Tywin had a Valash uh, game one. Oh, right? yeah, I'm sorry. This is the same as game two. Game okay. one was Kinu Valash. Uh, game two was uh, Koish and Cernif. Although I, I still kind of agree with what you had said before. I think that Mooflank would have been the better option. And now, especially with this Mushuk in play and, and Barnshi potentially getting banned out. That, that could change the tides a little bit for Buff Duck. Barnshi did a lot last game. Definitely. It got rid of the Golder. Luckily for Tywin, he did decide to ban it, but this Mushuk nonetheless still giving him some troubles here. I could see Buff Duck banning the Barnshi. That does mean Kinu does slide through. So those Kinu buffs, time and time again, we've seen how effective they can be at keeping your Temtems alive in the long run. But. There it goes. Barnchi does indeed catch the ban on the side of Tywin. As you said, that is big. That is definitely big. Tywin is going to have to deal with this Mashuk in another way. I guess Kinu perhaps could be a good way. Yeah, I mean, Kinu's definitely solid. I think that Kinu's main focus in this life is just going to be buffing up Gialis because that hook kick just became so much more important. Now that Gialis is really the best way to, to fight off three, maybe even four of Buff Duck's Thames. Yeah, we're bringing it back to the good old times. Kinu Gialis, is it going to shine here today? And it does get the Kinu Silvalash, so kicking it on the bench. But this is it, everyone. Game number three of our quarterfinals. Who is moving forward? This is a heck of a series. I can't tell. I mean, on paper, actually on paper, still still relatively close, but this much Shug Volrin just giving this opener a little bit of a rough lead only because Buffta could almost do Noxious Bomb Yurishol into either of these slots. And that is a good value right there. Maybe more so onto the Koish. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> it's it's kind of similar as before. There's maybe a better ban of uh, for Talon's side, getting rid of Goulder. There aren't as many Thames that could swap in and, and take this double. I, I think that it may be worth just going for uh, what everybody would expect with the Quetzalenyo and Water Cutting Lily towards Volar End. I mean, Quetzalanya will do quite a lot if he stays, and if Volcrane comes out at the very least, you're getting neutral damage from the Synergy Master Water Cutting Lily. Okay. So yeah, Volar retreats. I guess he could just go for a good old P jab. Most Mashooks tend to run, not most Mashooks, but some Mashooks tend to run Tenderness. So Tenderness could be a good turn to one play for the Cerny, but everything is staying in. So Water Synergize WCL does get thrown out onto the bird and geez that's still some good damage yeah that was a lot more than i was expecting to see the the feather gatling does hit koish down for just a little bit more uh but that was maybe a little bit more in the expected side quetzalanyo not quite enough to bring volarin down and with that aru shield synergy that is koish's death certificate uh just not quite yet yeah, and it looks like all that damage can be attributed to to the Wardrum on the Koish, the Synergy Master trait, and the Water Synergy. So all that adding up to about 30 plus percent. So not too bad. Volarin on Death's door, of course. One more attack. One more WCL from the Cerny. Actually, funny enough, takes it down. The question is, though, Koish is no way going to be surviving to get the Water Synergy on top of it. So can a normal WCL clean it up? That is the question. I mean, it did like 30, I can't remember. It was, it, it ended at like 67%, right? I'm trying to remember exactly. So it did about like 32%. Yeah, I mean, losing the Synergy Master and the War Drum is, is going to be pretty big. It may actually be better to bring Mooflank in for Cernif and, and get the Quetzal Synergy. Uh, then, then at the very least you're playing well, no, because Volaren can still just uh, can hyper. So I guess this is this is a really good situation for Buff Duck because of that plus one speed, despite being so low. 
I I don't think that Cernif would be able to kill without the help of Synergy Master and Boardrum. I think I think that it would just barely fall short. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see. I'm thinking it still will because it's like a difference of like, you know, 12, 13 percent. But you might be right. We'll have to see. But Volerant has a hyperkinetic strike available to him. He's the fastest Temtem on the board at plus one speed. So at HKS, just to close out the Koish before he's able to do anything, could be a good idea. Because Koish goes down in the next two turns regardless. I mean, he could do something like revitalize the Koish. But that's a lot of tempo he will be giving up. Yeah, HKS does come through. Targets the Cernif instead of Koish. So leaving a bit of an opening. Uh, especially yeah, water cutting the lead it still keeps that synergy master so uh, absolutely it does way too much damage brings down Volarin just like that but this Mushuk still oh. standing here very healthy rainbow guard that, that is interesting it knocks off the toxic it protects Koish so it's not going to die this turn and no Cern or sorry no Volarin means no Arushiel synergy means Cernif is able to survive a little bit longer and now with Volfi coming in this is looking potentially very good. If if this Cernif is able to go first, that would be quite a lot of damage on the Volfi. Yeah, absolutely. We saw how much it did doing half damage on the Volrin. So Volfi might be taking 60, 65, if not a little bit more. But yeah, that is if it goes first. If Volfi Plague goes first and catches the Cernif, or maybe he just goes after Koish for the kill. 90% looks light work for a Plague. So could see both. I mean, overexerting the Cernif will be very a big, big value. So a lot of good turns or, you know, good opening turns for both players. Tywin does get rid of that big Volarin. But Buff Duck having Tywin take a lot of HP to do so. But all right, Cernif does retreat for the time being. And it is indeed a move flank. So maybe going for Quetzalenio before calling it. I, I do like this. It, uh, the Quetzalenyo synergy is going to do a lot of damage, and since Koish is likely on its way out anyway, uh, you know, this is just a, a final say la vie. And of course, it does go down. Mooflank will be able to potentially kill Volfi now this next turn, but Volcrane coming out is so good for Buff Duck. Gialis does not have Hook Kick available, and with no special attackers that can really do the damage that Barnshee did last game, that means somebody has got to take some pretty big hits from Volcrane. Yeah, and especially the Koish just going down, so no water cannons anymore, so does elect to bring back this Cernif. And we did see from the previous attack, it was indeed a settling Cernif, so not any defenses proc, or any defenses buff proc from a Colossity trait. So we'll take a look. This Cernif might be a little switcheroo, maybe into the Kinu to buff up the move flank. Or, or does it feel confident something like a WCL Goring, possibly enough to take down the Volcrane? I don't know. Those are both physical attacks. Volcrane very physically defensive. So we'll see. I don't think those set of attacks will be enough. It's just neutral damage into Volcrane. So, okay, Volcrane does retreat. Interesting enough, I thought he was going to go for an attack on the Cernif there. A double swap for Buff Duck, too. So, Volfi retreating doesn't want to take any deaths now, as Mushuk can take doubles all day long from physical Thames. And, and Barnshi wouldn't mind the Goring one bit. The Water Cutting Lily, though, let's see just how much it's able to accomplish wow. onto this Mushuk. It's really not as much without the, uh, <laughs> without the Synergy Master War Drum. Yeah, and that was just perfectly red for Buff Duck, knowing Tywin's intentions of taking down the Volfi, eating it beautifully with the Mashug, literally the best Temtem to eat all that damage with. Maybe, of course, in hindsight, being 2020, could have split a big WCL on the barn. She would have been big, but Buff Duck, well done to him. But Tywin now sitting on a plus two speed move flank. But the Barnshee does pressure him out a little bit. One, two, two beta bursts will be enough to take down the move flank. So we will see. It looks like the current board highly favoring Buff Duck. So what can Tywin do to try to... Try to find himself in a better position? You know what? Buff Duck did a double swap last turn. What if we get the good old tried and true Gialis and Kinu swap this turn? That doesn't feel all that bad. 
yeah, that that's a pretty good way to to handle it. If if Buff Duck wants to play this game, then oh. Talon could. But with the cage, if he double swapped, then that would be huge. But no base jump. He just wants to do the damage. Was shook down to forty two. Okay. Cerny for water cutting Lily. This this has to be on Farnsheet spot now, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's above fifty percent. The overexertion does make it rough. Uh, but I, definitely the cage was red. The cage was expected. Mm -hmm. If, if, if that's play that we see, uh, but definitely this this does kind of put Buff Duck still in a good spot. I mean, Mushuk is is afraid because Mooflink will be able to attack it one more time. Uh, but I mean, Cerny can't do very much this turn. Well, can't do anything this turn, and Gialis cannot swap in to get Hook Kick available. So yeah, this Volcrane is still just looming in the background very true i mean it has camel meal as well so won't be able to sleep it as well if it comes back on the board reset the camel meal so buffed up with that cage it was nicely read from tywin i have to give tywin credit for the read there staying on the board and getting a little bit more value as he would otherwise that double swap would have been disastrous but goring does go on the mashuk but turbo time all right buffed up taking advantage of the cerny if not being able to do anything he does indeed get the kill on the move flank, but that leaves the Cerny a potential another WCL here. I I do like that turbo a lot though, because now Gialis comes out. This this is good for the Volcrane, but that means that Gialis is no matter what taking a tornado. Yeah, I mean tornado is indeed online. He could decide to throw it on the Cerny just to not let the WCL go off. Gialis only has double gash, but hey, that is the biggest amount of damage that Buff Duck can do currently, so might as well do it to the healthiest Temtem. I'm just worried that the Cerny won't be going down this turn, and that's a lot of value for the WCL. It kills the Bornchi from this position. It did over 50% the previous turn, so of course it'll do 50% again. So I don't know. I don't see. I don't blame Buff Duck if he wants to go into Cernif as well. The most ideal play if a single buff, a wind burst can be enough to close out the Cernif and still save the tornado. That would be ideal, but it looks to be a little bit too close for comfort. Yeah, I mean, because Gialis is coming in off of a death and doesn't have any of its holds available, it, Buff Duck certainly could kill Cernif this turn. Because uh, Double Gash, let's be perfectly honest, is not even going to tickle Barnshi or Mushuk. Mm -hmm. So so it is still a pretty free turn for Buff Duck to do as he pleases. Um, so you're probably right. That, that is a good a good way to go. Just Wind Burst the Cernif and maybe Perfect Jab Gialis just to make it a little bit more weak to Volcrane. Yeah, I could definitely see it, but no cage this turn. So buffing up Gialis, that is the game plan. That is the saving grace. That is what Tywin needs to get back into this race. So as you said, Double Gas shouldn't be doing so much, but Tornado does indeed go onto the Gialis. So the Kinu buff coming in at the perfect time. And a big overexertion on Barnshi as well. Uh, so it's it's not going to make a difference as far as uh, you know damage dealt. It, it's going to die as soon as it takes a hit from the Gialis anyway. But, but it doesn't mean that it can't attack this turn it can't do more damage onto this gialis yeah leaves the revitalized place somewhat viable recover that uh the tanky or tanky er gialis then the base stat so could go for that could also just try to go for a beta burst on mashuk i mean super super straightforward of course sharps that beta burst kills these two board but buff duck has a wolfie and a volcrane in the back line is it time for those guys to come out and if so, is it time for a hook kick? I mean, both of those Temtems easily take over 50% from a hook kick. Or does Buff Duck just stay in and hope Tywin overplays it just a little bit? Because, you know, he has a kill, as we said, with the stabs, with the beta burst. But does he just click hook kick expecting a swap? Hmm... Yeah, I mean, Buff Duck does start off by retreating Barn Chief for Volcrane, so any crystal attacks going that way will accomplish nothing. Turbo Choreography from this Mushuk, it's <laughs> the final gift to its brother. It, it makes it go just that much faster. Now those Stone Balls are going to be essentially normal prio, but it was a double gash. 
Double cash and beta burst doubling into the Volcrane. That means hook kick is enough to kill. I mean, Volcrane definitely can be built speedy, but is this one going to be fast enough that now with a plus one, that its embers would be able to stop or, you know, go before the Kialis? Yeah, I just don't think. I think it's, it's a little bit too slow. Plus one speed, nicer, but a Gialis, we're talking about the fastest Temtem or tied with the fastest Temtem in our game. So even with that plus one speed, I still believe Gialis will be faster. So we will see. I mean, if it is, I'll be highly impressed, but it doesn't really seem, at least from the past couple games, that it is a speedy, a speedy Ur Volcrane than we're used to seeing. So I do think the, the hook kick should be enough. But let's see what Buff Duck decides to bring in on this right slot. Hmm, Barnchi or the Volfi are the options. Okay, so just getting the Volfi out here. So I think the idea here, if you hook kick the Volcrane, does Vortex eat your booty? <laughs> and if you hook kick the Volfi, Volcrane eats you alive as well. So I think this is a, a kind of a bit of a checkmate. You got to pick your poison here. Well, I, I think that the the better option is is pretty apparent. You got to mm -hmm. double into this Volcrane spot if you're going to do anything. Because, I mean, this, this Volfi we've seen uh, three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, uh, Kinu versus Volfi for the final two times. Oh. They stalled it out like 15 turns, and Kinu was able to win that one. Very uh, true. So, <laughs> so especially with the Cernif as well. I mean, Cernif could always come in onto a revitalize. And, and something could get going there to survive this Volfi and fight back, but there is nothing that wants to fight Volcrane. Oh, and Embers, Embers goes first. <laughs> Embers goes first, and oh. Plague goes second. Gialis, the Crystal Queen, falls down. Wow. And the Beta Burst. I mean, it's a good thing that Kinu didn't go for the Revitalize. Yeah, well played to him, and man, I'm eating my words right here. I thought Gialis would surely still be enough to outspeed. I mean, it was normal prior being turned into three. Oh wait, yeah, normal prio into three prio. Yeah, I guess I guess so. I was thinking for some reason it tied in speed, but wow, 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 that might have been the winning play right there for Buff Duck. Final two Temtems. It is a Kinu. It is a Cerny, but man, Giala is going down without any anything to say for himself. But I don't think Tywin is completely out of this one just yet. Not at all. I think. This Cernif, something's telling me that we saw Cernif go first earlier, and, and I think that that's uh, that is the case with the the settling Cernif that plays with Koish. It is pretty fast. Nothing else. That's a confirmed kill on either Volcrane or Barnshi. Maybe if Talwin's able to predict a swap, he can beta burst that Volcrane spot and and target down Volfi. But I don't think that that kind of risk is necessarily worth it. The water cutting lily does go first before anything else, and it does take down this Volcrane. So that that opens up the possibility now. I mean, Volfi's not going to be able to do too much damage. Cernif does hold on again. Although now this Barnshee's coming back out, and Barnshee is plus two speed. Oh. So it, it may be all down to this Kinu. Yeah, Kinu going for the beta burst. I was thinking maybe time for the revitalize, but hey, beta burst on it. Oh yeah, I think you're right, Rosie. The tornado never deployed, right? Tornado. Oh no, no. Maybe it did. We did see tornado on the Gialis, so I don't think it, it has it right now. Even if it doesn't, it, with the plus two speed, I oh, think wind burst is, is already enough, and an energy manipulation mm -hmm. as well would would be enough to bring down Cernif. Yeah. So absolutely. it's it's definitely all up to this Kinu. I yeah. think if if Kinu is able to bring down Barnshi then I think Talwin might be able to do it, but the stamina is so low, and Plague is just going to make it worse. Oh, and Yaz is going to heavily overexert here, so Buff Duck, with that turbo choreography on the Volcrane, might have been the winning play. Beta Burst, not even enough. Ooh. Yeah, I think, that that's, I think that that's GG's for Buff Duck now, because the Tornado is going to be enough to kill on its own. The concession comes through, Talwin from 5-0 to 1-2 as Buff Duck moves on to face Trotter in the semifinals.